Hi Sarah, I just wanted to make a suggestion. Um, I really think that it's a good idea and I kind of like wish people would kind of like sort of think of creative ways to get more help rather than just putting posts or asking people. So like also maybe Tracy as well, but so look, if you go to the change.org Darwin Save Darwin Oak petition, you can just type it in on Google and it'll it'll be come up in the first results, right? You've probably you've likely already signed that petition. If you haven't, then you should know about it. It's got up to hundred thousand signatures nearly it, it, like ninety thousand, it's nearly a hundred thousand and it's a local petition. Um very, very quickly, particularly since Chris Packham and some other people shared it. I've put um, a little video comment on there, but you only get 30 seconds to speak. And I, so I, I actually put like a, a, I put a link up um, to one of my YouTube videos where I actually made like a proper full length um, video. Like I put like the, I made like a, you know that Earl shortening website where you can like, you know, tiny Earl. So like, you know, because YouTube links are quite long. You can put comment, you can put links in comments, but they get buried. Um, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of comments on there. The thing is, the videos are like just basically underneath um, the petition. Although I know a lot of people who sign it, you know, don't look through all the comments and look around the petition. But for people who do... What I think is a good idea, this is what this is what I really think what would be useful at this stage. That petition is is getting a lot of attention and a lot of people who are interested in trees, countryside, green belt, all the type of people that you really are wanting to try and get interested in your group here. This group. You want in all these people that you want to help you with this Manchester Green Belt, right? So um, you have to be a little bit brave. I am not that brave because um, I've made a little comment on there, but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't appear myself. I held up like a piece of paper which I printed out some information on, but I still spoke. Um, I think that if if the girl, like if you are set, if 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 Tracy or yourself, right, or one of your friends. Um, if they go sign that Darwin Oak petition, and then if you look, you can put comment, but you might not find it straight away, but you get to this red button. Maybe I'll, I'll actually show you how to do it. Just a minute. If you type in save the Darwin Oak, the petition comes up straight away. Look, there's 90,470, so I mean, it's well on its way to 100,000, and it hasn't even been going that long. I've already signed it, but you've got this take the next step step button after you've signed it and you visit it, um, that button appears. So you scroll down and then um, see at the bottom where it says, sorry, I can't do anything um, right now. Can you see right at the bottom when it says, sorry, I can't do anything right now. If you press that, then you can add a video. I know that it's a ridiculous, difficult way to find how to do it, and I, it, it, it's really, really not apparent that you can do it or uh, how to do it, which is why I really don't think these petition sites really are offering the best ways for people to help. Um, so can you see that button there? Look, record a video message. Um, so, so you just press that red button um, and then it opens up your camera on your phone and you can record a little clip. Um, obviously, I suppose you want to, you know, 
um, get comfortable and make a nice, you know, get get into a, a decent place where you want to record it. And I don't know if you want to put your makeup on or not. That's up to you. I I I'm not the greatest fan of appearing on the internet and so forth, but. I feel strongly enough about all these issues that I have come compelled to say something about it, which is why I'm talking now um, and telling you this, right? I've put two little videos on there and I've still got more to say because I they're entitled to a referendum and it's the Secretary of State for Transport and there's lots of technicalities about the legislation that I've been going through whereby when you're using the right to petition, you're not held to certain clauses in those acts and you can even make up your own terms and conditions and anyone who wants to amalgamate petitions can call it and ask for it it's the secretary of state for transport that's who is because if you ask for a local referendum the council have got to refer it to him right and that's the same with the save stonehenge tunnel petition at the moment as well um now this is what i think is a good idea right if you or one of your friends who is brave enough to go on there, you only get 30 seconds to speak. But what you can do is you could just say, um, you know, you could just say, you know, hi, I'm, you know, Tracy or I'm Sarah from the, um, you know, Save the Manchester Greenbelt group. Um, we support the Save Darwin Oak petition. This tree shouldn't be taken down. And... We, you know, also, you know, we'd like love people to come and support our group as well and help um, us protect our countryside. So th the videos get are actually underneath the petition on the first page once you put one. So if we get 100,000 people going through it. Now, I have put videos, um, but I've only got three or four likes. Um, maybe people haven't got the time to watch them. You could probably make a lot better video than I can make. Um but it's still it's still there and it's getting you're not going to get anywhere at the moment that's getting that amount of um people signing petitions or going anywhere near countryside or greenbelt petitions at the moment i think that if you make a really nice little short 30 second clip just saying that you support the darwin oak petition and um you know you're from the save the manchester greenbelt the name of the group um you know come join us whatever if you do that, I think that Heather Peacock, who's in the Save the Trees group, will do it as well. I've mentioned it to her. Um, it, it, and then if you if she did it as well, right, you know, left a little message to support that petition and mention the Save the Trees group as well, then you're starting to build a little um, portfolio of videos of these groups that are wanting to save Greenbelt and Trees. And that is what you're wanting because members of those groups um, have got the similar interests and, and they're the people that you're wanting to sign. And then I also think, I've, be, I've been mentioning it to Stonehenge Alliance. Stonehenge Alliance has got 200,000 signatures and they still haven't stopped that um, tunnel yet. They're even wanting to take up take away the world heritage site status i think if you and heather do it i think stern angel alliance will also do it as well um i don't know why chris packham hasn't recorded a little video message on there directly but he i mean he he he, he advertised it on his own group and he's got brought in a hell of a lot of signatures um i really think that it's a good time now because you know that tree got cut down on hadrian's wall and a lot of people were upset about it. And I think that's why this Darwin Oak petition has attracted a lot of attention as well. But the thing is that really your group, Save the Manchester Greenbelt, needs to attract people like from Save the Trees in Huddersfield and Save the Trees in Huddersfield needs to attract people from the um, your group. And then you need to really be getting the people who've been signing that Darwin Oak petition interested in um your group and coming to sign your petitions and same with Stonehenge Alliance and so forth. So like you're building up a network. Why why record a 30 second video on there? Because it's somewhere where a hell of a lot of people are going to sign petitions concerning trees or countryside. And I think that if you put a nice video there it'll um catch people's eye and you know I think it'll get people to your group. 
And also, we want to be forming an alliance. We want to be forming like a consul. We want to be getting all these, all these separate groups of uh, Facebook, like yours, and have a Peacock's group. Uh, and there's some for other areas that have joined, but they're all quite smallish. But but you want to be getting all those people to actually go into that group and record a video and mention their group and say they support that petition and kind of like but sort of weave a spider web and get people um, to. That's how you're going to get people to these little groups, but you also really want those little groups to come together. I think ultimately what we want to do is we want to get the law changed, the legislation changed to make it a lot easier to protect. Because the green belt's meant to be there to protect it so you don't have to protect it. And because of these, a lot of these corporate companies and councils and contractors, it's not getting protected. The whole point in... When there is no green belt or when there is no World Heritage Site status, then, you know, that's when you need to put objections into councils and do petitions. But when those protections are in place, it, it, you know, the green belt protects it so you don't have to. You're already protected. And these councillors are overriding a lot of this, pushing the corporate and, um, you know... It, around us here it's a nightmare you know and it's bringing a lot of traffic and noise um people just don't want all this building and you know um it, it should be a lot easier the green belt is meant to protect it so you don't have to and it's been undermined and also i need to say this at the moment all these legal technicalities and legal points that you know they want the council want you to put in an objection and it has to be you know you have to say that there's an environmental factor or certain animals have been affected or uh, pollution figures or something like that technical arguments and points of law putting a case there one person can put a very very strong case the applicant the person who's applying is just one company or one person right when someone has a load of money, millions, and they put an application in, it's only one one group, one person, one entity, right? They're putting a case to the local authority that it should approve planning or building. It's a, it's a legal case, but it gets decided that the permission gets given in the council. The, the chair of the county council um, was given justice of the peace powers, right? Now, this is the thing. Um, so... The, when the whole jury, you might have seen some of these Extinction Rebellion cases recently, right, where the jury has just said not guilty and they've disregarded the law. Because if you read, you've got, we've, uh, you've got to study all these old laws and legislation that it's all based on. And the petition of right uh, is like the founding basis of, of, of the jury, which is that, it, it can be decided on point of law or the opinion of the peers, which is, you know, through lawful process of the peers. So you actually just need to get a lot of people together and say, you know, we don't like this or we don't agree with it or we don't want it. You don't, they don't have to have a reason. Um, they just object, oppose. Um, you don't have to have a technical legal point or not when it comes down to jury decision and that's what, effectively, when you're getting a petition to the council, you really are, you're overriding the councillors when you're going out of your way to get all the signatures. And when you get uh, 5% equal to the electorate, it's meant to go to a local referendum and the councillors don't decide. It's meant to be the people. Um, and that's, they're not using that. They're not giving the local referendum powers because A, they don't want to pay for it and B, um, even though we're paying all our council taxes and things like that and national insurance and stuff, they, 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 because they're the minions of the corporate, that's why. And we all know this, everyone knows this, and this is the same with the Department of Transport. They're just doing what they want, not what the people want. There's a lot of campaigns now doing, you know, let the people decide, let the people decide, or we the people, or whatever, you know, even with all those, that ULES issues in London, they're all taking it into their own hands now. They're just like, you know, a lot of the people are just physically intervening and, and physically stopping the council. Um, and now they're starting to get a lot of signatures and support from the public consent. And they're writing and signing petitions, which is a lawful process, a legal writ and oath of opposition. When the public support it, it's, it, it's effectively... 
the decision of the peers, the people, um, you know, that's where we're getting with it now. Um, the people really are starting to um, say to these authorities, you know, we've, we've got jurisdictive authority to intervene. Um, but sim I'm tr trying to simplify it, right? I just think that if you... If someone from the group puts a nice message, uh, a really you know, nice little short 30 second message, very well presented, you know, with the mobile phone here by pressing this button here, which is hard to get it to appear. Once you've signed the petition, it's not easy to find where the button is, right? Um, if you record a little message saying you're from the, say, the Manchester Greenbelt group or, or the full name of the group and even hold up a little piece of paper with the link with an Earl or make a short Earl, you see, if you get your Facebook group and the link for the Facebook group, and if you go to that tinyearl.com site, you can think of a name just like, you know, Manchester Greenbelt or whatever, and tinyearl.com forward slash Manchester Greenbelt. Um, you know, it will really help get the right type of people that you want. Who are the people that you're wanting to come to that group and sign those petitions? You're crying out for help. Well, those 100,000 people who signed that Darwin Oak petition for a start. So if you don't try, then you won't succeed. I think that if you put a nice video, then someone else will, you know, I think Heather Peacock will. You need to brave it. I mean, I've kind of braved it, but I'm not fully, partially braved it. And then I really think Stone Angel Alliance needs to make a little video on there as well. And we need to start saying to the Secretary of State to Transport, look, and the chair of the council, look, we want, we want a local referendum on it. Give us a local referendum, you know, um, because they're just doing what they want. They're doing what the corporate companies want. They're not doing what the people want. They're doing what the money says, people putting massive amounts of money on the table um, for development, and, and, and we don't want development. They're making mi life miserable for people. They're making the places that you live in depressing. They're actually causing social problems you know people are and that type of houses they're building and the type of buildings they're building aren't nice they're not building nice places where i am here right with my parents so in the countryside there's um a beautiful there was a beautiful field they could have like you know made it into growing spinach or you know nettle or you know vegetables or, or something like that you know they could have made a beautiful plantation for growing healthy food and the old guy, I don't know why he sold it, and he, he didn't even live to see the finishing of building of those houses. He popped his clogs, and, you know, I don't know whether his relatives made any money out of it or not, if he's a team player for, you know, the Labour Party or what. But, see, this is a, a conservative area, though. But one of the councillors jumped in uh, and was singing and dancing to protect some of the um, land from building down in the village, and everyone thought it was a hero. Then, quietly, this got approved. Um... It, it's it's at the the edge of a ridge which overlooks a beautiful area of countryside which hasn't been built on which has got villages in it right small villages and and so forth there's a riding school now if you wanted to build there why wouldn't you build um you know houses separated along the road where everyone's got a nice view no they didn't do that what they did is they got a plot of land in a beautiful area on the edge of the countryside overlooking the countryside and they built you know a dozen houses um all squashed in facing each other not even so you can't even with angles out of the windows so you don't even get a good view of the countryside and, and all of the houses can't even see the views and on this like little country lane which has got a farm at the end of the track so why why build that because they made a lot of money out of it and you know so forth uh, profit and they crammed a load of people in but they didn't make create something nice for people and not want to make a personal killing out of it personal profit for themselves why not just make a small profit but provide nice houses oh it's not worth doing it if we're not going to make a killing out of it the, the, it's all wrong it, it's it's all the whole paradigm of it is wrong the whole intent behind it is wrong. And the council shouldn't even be approving it. It's changing the appearance and style of the area, which they're not meant to do. You know, 
what they're designing and building, and then behind us, um, there was two nice bungalows with nice gardens. It fit with the name of the the, the street, um, and the 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 guys. One of unfortunately, one of the ladies' uh, husband passed away, but then the next door neighbour, moved, he's car salesman. They, they both sold up, and then they, they put this. They, they built this little cul-de-sac street with, with with an electric gate on it, a security gate, so you can't even get into the street without putting a security code in. This is in like most one of the most safest areas you can get, and just um, like some sort of fortress estate. And changed the whole uh, the, the, the the rural road. Then was changed. I don't know how the council got it through. It, it, it's impossible by doing it by rule of law. They're just blagging it. There was no um, planning application notices up visible that you could see. And then they've done it again. And this is what Kestama's pushing on everyone. These powerhouse things. They're they're really horrible and grotesque. And what is actually why not? If you're in the countryside and you want to provide housing, why not build one nice house here with, you know, uh, nice views for itself? You know, it's not depressing everyone in the area. It's not depressing the person who buys it. And then another one, then another one. Even for a small profit margin, the person is still making money. But, oh, it's not worth doing it for that. Well, it, you, you're actually what you're designing and building. Rubbish. Just to squeeze people in. Like, you know, it's almost like, you know, having a rodent ranchero or something. Why do it? You know, it, 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 it's all wrong. You know, Sunak wouldn't live there. You know, he's got a, a, a nice house in North Yorkshire, right? Why not, you know, oh, well, we'll build houses for people like Sunak, you know, spread them out a bit, give them a bit of space in between, have something beautiful. No, they're, they're ramming people in these places, but the places they're ramming them in, when once they've filled up, you know, around the town and they've filled every nook and cranny in with houses they can think of, even blocking views off which have nice views um, in the suburbs of the town. Now they're starting here. Why not build something nice? You know, it, it is... They, they want to make a profit out of us and it's causing um, spiritual detriment to the local people. It's causing sadness, unhappiness. It's actually ruining the area. It's it's making people's lives miserable. Not nice to live there anymore. They don't want to talk to the people who've moved in because there's resentment. They resent the people who've bought the houses and built them and moved in. No one's talking to each other. And then they're wondering why there's crime in Birmingham. You know, they're wondering how Richie Sunak's like, oh, how can we solve these crime problems? What, 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 do these people need a new sports centre and some new Reebok trainers and electric scooter? What's wrong with these people? You know, well, you, you're making uh, a world around them that's rubbish. McDonald's drive through you think will solve it. There's something wrong with Keir Starmer and there's something wrong with Rishi Sunak. We need to stop them. If they're not doing it for a profit, if they're doing it for to make something nice that people can afford, you know, build a nice world, not, you know, a horrible world. But yeah, this is what really gets me, right? They're bringing in all these new laws. Oh, you can't say this, you can't say that about someone, you can't blink or nod at someone because it'll offend them, right? Yet the, the council and these people who are putting planning in are offending everyone. In the bus station, right? If anyone in Bing Bong, if any if anyone in this bus station makes you feel the slightest bit uncomfortable, please report it to an attendant. You know, oh, oh, someone looked at me funny in the bus station. Oh my soul, my soul, you know. You can get them prosecuted, get set the police on them, but you know, oh, it, you know, we, you know, we, it, you wake up in the morning, you open the windows, and the sun come through. Oh no, like the, it's building blitz, you know. Oh, if any of these building or planning applications the council have passed makes you feel the slightest bit uncomfortable, you know, it's like the chair of Shropshire Council seat should be on fire, you know, Keir Starmer's headquarters should be on fire. These people are putting laws through. The government, how dare they? So you really can't even now 
B, angry about what's happening to you because then it's making the other person feel uncomfortable who has actually, actually made you feel uncomfortable. No, more than uncomfortable, that actually, that they're actually creating a, it's like building hell and they need to be stopped. If we don't stop them, right? They need to be stopped now and forever. Corporate entities, Balfour Beatty, Care, same, same name as the leader of the Labour Party who wants to build powerhouses everywhere. Care Construction, Taylor Wimpy. We need legislation in place where... If people in an area don't want building there, they can call for a special council procedure which compulsory has to... I mean, every village has only got about 3,000 people if it's a modest size. Anyway, 3,000 flyers isn't much. There should be a procedure where if you get more than 150 signatures, then the council has to do 10,000 flyers, which doesn't really cost much, around the village. And if, if, if um, people you know, of a certain percentage vote, then they can't build there. And no councillors make no decisions. That's what we need, a new legislation. And that would be a horrific to Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer because it would block their strategic planning plans permanently. And then what happens to the country is what we want to happen to it, not a load of contractors with corporate interests with strategy, strategy, strategy against us all the time. This should be happening now easily on Facebook and YouTube um, and these local groups. But the, we are getting opposition, but they're disregarding, they're disregarding the figures you get and they're just disregarding the objections. And they're saying it's got to be on this point or that point when it doesn't have to be. It can be just on the fact that, you know, we don't want it.